Welcome to Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast. One, two, one, two! I'm Jeffrey A. McGuire. A lot of people call me Jam. And this is where we celebrate the Typo 3 community, sharing your stories, talking about your projects, and the difference you make in, around, and with Typo 3 CMS. Today, my guest on the podcast is Rachel Foucault, Typo3 community lead from France, member of the Typo3 Association board, and CTO from W Sales in France. W Sales is W hyphen S E I L S. I can save you some Googling for that. I was fascinated to talk with Raquel about building relationships with her clients and the sales cycle today, selling solutions and not tools anymore. Rachel is also the UX lead in the Typo3 Structured Content Initiative, and we talk about being not German and uh, part of the Typo3 community. I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I enjoyed having it with Rachel. Small note, I called Rachel, Raquel, for our entire conversation and um, had a chat with her about that afterwards and apologized for my mispronunciation she was very generous and said, oh, you just pronounced it the Spanish way. Raquel is completely fine. And I would also answer to Rachel. But FYI, everyone, it's Rachel Foucault. Please enjoy. How are you? It's, uh, I haven't seen you in a couple of years, I guess, at this point. Yes, uh, I think the, the only time we met in real was uh, in Paris. Uh, you came uh, to uh, help uh, some of us, of the, the French community, to uh, find out how we could uh, better um, communicate about Type 3. Yeah. So, um, so that's actually a that's actually a really interesting question to me. For a long time, I think people perceived the Typo 3 open source project, the Typo 3 CMS, as a German project. Um, but there is quite a lot going on outside of Germany, and I feel part of what I can, what I hope to contribute to, to to the project is to bring it to the attention of people outside of of its traditional sort of Central European strongholds. But um, tell me about being in Typo Three, but not being German. <laughs> well. Um... You feel a little bit lonely sometimes <laughs> because um, only when you meet uh, marketing people, because when you meet uh, more technical uh, customers, I mean, um, the uh, in, uh, IT people, you know, um, uh, they are really, um, oh, well, they think that Type 3 is a, a better product than the others. It's not difficult to convince them, um, but uh, in the marketing uh, um, teams, uh, they uh, they know better products like uh, WordPress or Drupal, um, and Type Three for them is something very technical and not user friendly, uh -huh. um, because they have in mind a memories of the. Lay, the, the very old version of Typo 3, and they didn't go back to that uh, interface since years. So for them, it's a very, uh, you know, you have little buttons and it's um, a gray uh, interface, very old fashioned, complicated, oh. and they have that in mind. So we have to show them the new interface first and show them also, uh, <laughs> Well, everything that was already in place at the very beginning of Type 3, but now they think that, oh, yes, it's very useful finally, because uh, when you have bigger project and a lot of, well, a lot of website inside a, a, a unique platform, it's very useful for them. Yep. So you have to show them and show them again, you know, it's different now and you right. see it's interesting for you. 
So I think I think what we need right now on the screen is a is a picture of what the back end looks like and the very clear interface and the um and it's colorful and rather intuitive to use and the um the nice thing is also that you can customize the back end that someone sees so that it's basically just set up for them to do their job one two three four and um not be distracted by by um what they don't need to see it's true that uh, since two or three years now, it's uh, less and less difficult to uh, to uh, sell Type 3. Um, not because uh, the, the, the product uh, uh, is better than the others, because every product are, are cool and well. That's not really the problem. Now I think that the customers don't really care about the product. Mm -hmm. It's strange, but finally they don't want absolutely Typo three or Drupal or WordPress in their project. Uh -huh. They want they want a project. They want something. Um, well, they ask with their uh, they, they they talk about their needs now. And nice. It's easier to answer well their needs with Typo three than other product. For example, they say that they want something that uh, they, they want a tool that helps them to manage uh, several uh, languages or several websites, but they don't care about the product uh, uh, behind. And then when we answer that with Type 3, we answer better than the other project. Mm. That's some, um, I, um, having been in the web business for, for quite a long time now, that's really interesting that people are being a little bit less, let's say, religious about the projects now. Yes. Um, because I remember spending <laughs> a lot of time um, asking people, but why do you need that? But why do you need that? But why do you need that um, to, to get them to understand the concept of needs? And um, so you feel that that helps you that feel that that helps you sell more projects? That perception? Yes, because now the customers are experienced and they know what they really need and what they don't really need. So they ask us to uh, give them a solution and not a tool. <gasps> that is so interesting. Um, so what would the old way of asking for a project have been when they yeah. asked for a tool? Well, they, they, they listed all the functionality they wanted and uh, sometimes they, they said, I want uh, Typo 3 or I want Drupal, and then I want that fun uh, features, features, features. And uh, <laughs> sometimes they also uh, draw already their website uh, templates. So you just have to say, OK, that is the cost. So it was the very old way to, <laughs> to answer uh -huh. a, a project. After that, we told them, well, you shouldn't draw yourself your template and just ask uh, a company to do it for you. Mm -hmm. And then they always listed the features they wanted. And today uh, they say, okay, um, our end users need to communicate. Uh, our end users need to buy something or, well, they are more uh, vague in their, uh, 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 I don't know how to say it in, in English. Um, just a moment, I, I check in. You can tell me in French. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, cahier des charges. Aha, so it's the uh, requirements catalog, I think. Yes, yes, okay. exactly. But you're saying that the, the new solution awareness, they actually, they're aware of business goals and processes and different audiences and then are they asking you to help them solve that problem instead of just telling you, put a thing to click here and a, and, and, and a gallery there? Yes, that's nice. Exactly, yes, it's much better now. now and also, uh, they don't ask a web agency only to deliver a, a technical a solution, but also to take care of them uh, during uh, years after that and take care about uh, other uh, expectations like uh, SEO or UX and so on. So you don't have just to be good in Type 3, you have to be good in a lot of other things. Okay, so it's a it's become a holistic relationship. Yeah. I think that that um, must 
be a more satisfying way to work if you can have a relationship um, and 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 be involved in their business goals together. That sounds that sounds great. Well, good for the customers and good for us for helping them finally understand <laughs> that. <laughs> so, yes. um, so Raquel, who are you? What do you do professionally, personally? Well, so I do a few things about Type Three. Um, First, I'm the CTO of a web agency, a French web agency uh, in Nantes. Uh, it's just uh, below Paris, but near from the sea. Um, also, I'm- You're, you're the, totally, you're completely, absolutely allowed to pitch your agency. Tell us, tell us, what's your agency? Oh, okay. Uh, my agency is, uh, it's not easy to pronounce in English, even in French, <laughs> it's uh, W sales. I, I can't, really explain you why we are named like that okay. <laughs> but <laughs> the boss could <laughs> because it's, okay. it was an idea but finally it's very easy to remember because it's a strange word um, okay. so uh, we are a little web agency but uh, we only uh, make a project with type of tree mm -hmm. uh, i'm also the the lead of the french community uh, French type of three community since I, I don't know four or five years now uh, and um, I um, organize uh, events in France type of three comp every year except this year of course because it wasn't possible to organize yeah. events. So in case uh, people are listening in the future we are recording in 2020 when um you know none of us have been very far from our homes very often so far and um, yep i know what you mean you're at w sales as the cto um you are the type of three community lead in france you are also on the type of three association board yes since this year mm -hmm. uh, i was elected for two years and uh, I also uh, in an initiative, um, I work on the Structure Content Initiative since uh, last year. Uh, uh -huh. I am leading the, it's a, it's a big initiative. We are a lot of members, so we have three groups and I'm leading the UX one. Okay, so tell me about the Structured Content Initiative in, as, as a whole. Well, this initiative has a lot of goals, <laughs> but um, uh, it's it's an initiative that that uh, is very older than uh, its uh, official uh, birth, because uh, a lot of people want to uh, be able to create uh, customized content and structure content since a lot of. Uh, of years and there is um, already um, extensions that make us able to do it. So why uh, we, we made that initiative? Uh, mostly because we want something from the core, a, a solution from the core, but uh, not only we just, we, we don't want to, to take an extension and put it in the core as it is today uh, because Today, um, we have something uh, too complicated. I mean, uh, in terms of UX, but also in terms of data handling, uh, because to be able to, for example, make uh, uh, dynamic columns in um, a page, uh, we use containers. And you have content that are containers of other content that are containers of other content. And <laughs> you see what I mean? In some uh, complicated pages, because that exists, the, the editors have a, a lot of containers and contents inside and a lot of buttons and lines, and it's very difficult to, to handle. Mm -hmm. And in, uh, in the database also, it's not really uh, easy to migrate uh, from an extension to another and right. to, uh, to, 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 to make a difference between the real datas and the, uh, let's say, uh, positions, informations that shouldn't be in the same place. Right, right. Separating, separating content and display. Right. 
So that's our work. We are trying to solve all that problems. Uh, and uh, so th there is a lot of problems to solve. That's why we made three teams. Uh, our teams, uh, the group, uh, the UX group uh, is uh, trying to build uh, a new uh, page module with a dynamic grid content system. Mm -hmm. There is a team uh, that are um, solving all the developers and integrators problems because it's also uh, complicated for them to, uh, they have a lot of uh, code to do to, to create a new custom uh, structure content. So they are trying to find a, a new way, more modern and more fluid uh, to, to create uh, the, the structure content. And there is a rendering group that uh, are um, uh, working on all the, well, run, front end rendering uh, solution to make it possible. Right. Okay. So, Tell me the um, the I, I'm interested in the vision right now because uh, typo three lets us input and output semantic data and you know the concept of the content element means that I can attach a a caption to an image or I know it's a text or a phone number or an email so we, in that sense the data uh, is structured and i know that then i can choose to output that as as a web service and not as html for example um so what's the actual what's the core vision and the core problem the structured content is 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 addressing well we have to um to let the agencies and the project uh, existing project uh, uh, continue to exist and uh, we don't want to uh, uh, destroy uh, everything that already exists uh, and we have to propose solutions but our solutions don't, uh, don't have to uh, um, uh, uh, make that project obsolete and impossible to 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 exist you know so what we are proposing is not mandatory and if someone wants to go on with uh, a full uh, rich text editor page <laughs> with nothing structure inside mm -hmm. he can if, if he wants if if his customer but is you happy shouldn't. with that but you shouldn't <laughs> but you shouldn't <laughs> if you if you if you want to to think in a long-term view you shouldn't but for maybe uh, some customer that have little website and they are okay to uh, destroy everything and rebuild from zero uh, at the next time, it's not really important for them. Okay. It's true. So it's not important. So well, yes, okay, but um, we're supposed to be pure <laughs> <laughs> because I ideology is is more important than practicality. I'm really kidding. Um, <laughs> So, so, um, so I guess you have considerations in planning this, and not only is it not mandatory, but um, it needs to have a an elegant upgrade path from existing solutions and some concept of some backwards compatibility. I guess. Yeah, uh, and of course, uh, from for, for a customer that will begin a, a, a very new uh, project. Uh, in the next type of three version, it will have something uh, very solid and something that uh, make uh, the 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 data uh, able to be uh, uh, diff diffused in different ways and for a very long time. Um, but the reality is that today we have customers that have type three projects since years and years. And right. in each and every migration, everything works yeah. always. So yeah. <laughs> this so is a very to, good thing. <laughs> right, and that has to, that tradition has to continue. So um, yes, I, I know sites that started in version three and have been migrated right up to version um uh you know through all the different versions uh, uh along the way and that's that's remarkable um there's um i forget the name of the philosophical concept um where there's a there's a boat on the sea and it's on a voyage i this is a proper 
there's a proper word for it. I'm sure I'm going to find it and put it in the show notes. But um, um, you know, over time, you replace a piece and replace a mast and replace the planking and replace the sail, and it's the same ship except it's not any of the original materials, right? And so it's a great design and it's been upgraded a little bit along the way, but essentially you're running the same ship. And um, I've been very impressed with uh, um, the return on investment that people can get with Typo 3, um, installing it and having pretty easy, pretty elegant upgrades over 10 years or more. That's really, really, um, I think that's another thing. Um, I think that speaks also, um, I think that helps us in that story about building relationships with people over time. I think that sh um, people should hear about that. It's a confidence builder for sure. Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I, I think that uh, maybe that's the reason why um, we have um, a long-term relationship with our customers too, because the, the tool we are working with is a tool for um, years and they don't have to destroy everything at each time they want a new uh, website or a new uh, design or yeah. a new features yeah so, so i um i admit that i that i that i like and use and have been a part of multiple open source projects and even even multiple cmss and um uh it's a t it's a great weakness and it's a great risk to your project if every major version requires a rebuild and um and and upgrades are hard and um you know the the, the that that's a that's a really interesting decision and um the projects that i'm paying attention to right now are converging on a model that's much more like how typo 3 has been doing it for a long time where the um also as a business person in an agency you know that you would rather um not present the opportunity for someone to choose a new system and 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 go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, sure. Yeah. Um. So, tell us about the Typo Three Association and the Typo Three how how that fits into the Typo Three project and community. Well, uh, it's a very good question because. Um, if I love that uh, project, I mean Type Three. It's not only be because of the, the the technical reasons and the tool, but uh, also um, yeah. the community. Um, when I learned to develop my my first, first websites, uh, I directly learned with with Type Three and. Uh, uh, so I learned everything with Typo3 and uh, I discovered the, the open source uh, way to work and the Typo3 community uh, at the same time and it's, um, um, I think, a special community. Uh, it uh, <laughs> Because this community is a real community, I mean it's not a market uh, and user community. When we mm. talk about the Typo3 community, it's the the developers, the integrators, not uh, the people who just use the tool and uh, use uh, for free all what the, 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 the tool can, can provide. And um, yes, working uh, with the open source really fit my values and the way the community is, is uh, organized also uh, is really interesting because it's an association, it's not a company. It was not a company first, it was only an association and uh, everything is really well organized. Of course, there is a lot of things to improve, but when you think that everybody does it just like that and it's an association, it's, well, for, for a French person, we are just, well, maybe it's that because um, a lot of our, our German and German are really well organized in their mind, but well, <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how it can work, but it works. And then the association uh, decided to uh, create the Typo3 GmbH. Uh, so uh, now it's much better because we have that uh, little part of the association who is um, uh, organized as a, a company and uh, that uh, ensure that uh, we are, uh, we have the, the, well, the company is the, uh, responsible to get the things done in time because we don't have to forget that uh, there is a new uh, major version each uh, year and a half and it's a rhythm difficult to 
uh, respect uh, just right. that would be hard for for pure pure volunteers to keep on top of that i think yeah so we are very happy with that also uh, thanks to that organization with uh, type 3 gmbh we have also uh, elts and uh, for our customers it's great to 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 decide exactly when they will migrate to another version if they extended are... long-term support yes extending long-term support it's magic because uh -huh. when you are when you are a customer you have a very big uh, platform and you don't have this year the money to migrate to another version you can just choose to postpone that and you have uh, the ability to um, to schedule everything and uh, uh, make something interesting in the good year when for example you want also to rebuild the design you can migrate at the same time or uh, on the contrary choose another year well it's great for the customers and it's great uh -huh. for the agencies so does that help you sell more projects and convince more people yes really because they know on for for five years they know exactly what they will have to to uh to expense uh for a migration or for uh, an evolution or a new future and so on uh -huh. and it's really uh important for the customers so that so that that planning that planability is that the key factor for them the the giving them the power over that decision yes Okay. Yes. So some people would say, well, it's better to sell a rebuilt or a migration, mm -hmm. a forced, a forced migration. But the the, uh, the reality is not like that because the customer, right. if they don't have money, they don't have money to to migrate, and that's right. All. And you 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 would um you would damage that relationship of trust that that we've been talking about with the the client in all those ways. And um I think it's a huge. Um, if you're running an agency and you come to your client and you say, we could sell you an upgrade now, but instead, here's another, an, an option that, that gives you a lot more time. And we're not making money off of that choice, but it's, it's better for you. That's actually a fantastic way to have that trust and to make sure that they come back to you when they do have the money. Exactly. Right. So let's just be clear with this ELTS for a second. Um, mm -hmm. I get a new major version of typo 3 every 18 months or i get we get the the core team um releases a major version every 18 months and then for the 18 months following that is the is is fully supported with security and bug fixes and so on um along the way uh and then when the next major version comes out there's the, another 18 months where it is fully patched and security supported so there's a three-year official project support window that comes fr from the community by the magic of open source and then um now this is really important for us in europe for example because the gdpr laws the data privacy and protection and security regulations in in the european union um require us to run supported software and supported software uh, and 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 the most update to, up to date version and so on but there's these three years that constitutes then um, officially supported software now if we didn't have the GmbH company uh, with the commercial so you pay for the next ELTS so the extended long-term support is three more years of security patches essentially and backports of something if it's very very important um I end up with a six-year window of official support which is which is uh, a really long time in the software and the internet world and and the longest support cycle that I know and one of the really great tricks about the GmbH is that it is the official vendor of the project so um, it works completely with the community, but because the project has an official vendor, um, it can offer official support. And then um, I feel very strongly that this is a, a, a reason why Typo3 is a great choice for a government project, because you just get, you sort of can tick all of the boxes that they need um, mm -hmm. with that. So there's the documentation piece. <laughs> 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 um, but, but so you love this project and um, you feel that the association plus a commercial 
subsidiary gives gives some stability. And um, you clearly love the people who who have come together to do all of this. Um, what does the association board do? Why did you want to join it? Um, uh, the 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 board uh, has a, a, a few responsibilities, and um, this year uh, there is a um, distribution of the responsibilities. We are eight uh, members uh, with the president Olivier Doberco. Uh, uh, and <laughs> wait, wait, no, that's Olivier Dobacau. <laughs> Dobacau, okay. <laughs> no, it's I'm I'm only making the joke because he's half French, half German, so I'm sure his. I'm sure that you know, right? I, th I think he, he really insists that we don't say Oliver, but Olivier. It's very yeah. important for him. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, well, we have some responsibilities. Personally, I have uh, the responsibility of uh, the events, um, uh, also uh, the project uh, strategy and the, the, the uh, budget also. Uh, and yes, there is a lot of different responsibilities. So what we are doing is to help the existing team to uh, get things done and uh, to uh, make uh, as possible uh, the communication uh, between the GmbH and the association teams better and be sure that everything is going uh, okay. Uh, you, uh, yes, also the General Assembly, uh, I have that responsibility too. Um, so, uh, organize some administrative uh, events, of course, the General Assembly, the QSA, and so on. And we meet uh, uh, every two weeks to uh, talk about the different problems to solve and how we will uh, solve them. Um, we have a lot of work to uh, also uh, redesign uh, the processes and the organization of the different um, teams and committees and initiatives so the as a as a board the the typo 3 association board members are responsible also for for some some execution of their responsibilities well uh we have tasks to execute so we are doing things but um we are mostly uh trying to uh, help uh the the teams and the the teams leaders to to do the the responsibility they they have uh, right because, so supporting uh, the supporting the volunteers and the teams yes. and um one of the one of the wonderful practical aspects of the type of three community is that the 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 association has a budget um through memberships and sponsorships and so on to actually facilitate and and give the team leads resources when they need them and so on i think it's a very powerful uh, it's a powerful model in this in this community. Right, exactly. Um, so, why did you uh, why did you want to be on the board? <laughs> well, uh, it did it didn't really came to my mind uh, just like that. Someone told me, "Well, you could." And I said, oh, really? <laughs> and okay, I could. And then it came to my mind and I asked to myself, well, uh, wh what, what could I do for the, for, for the community, for the board? And um, uh, what was interesting for the, the board, they told me that it was interesting for them to have someone not German uh, <laughs> because we really need to uh, think as first maybe more European and then more worldwide because there is uh, users from all the all the, the globe. So uh, it's difficult to guess what the other community really needs and how they want to communicate and work. So. Uh, well, that was one reason. Uh, the other reason was also that uh, I was a woman and they really want to uh, have a community with uh, as women as possible. Sure. Uh, well, uh, the, uh, it's not a, a type of three problem. It's more of a IT problem. There is not a lot of women working in that uh, uh, right. kind of... Uh, well, yes, IT is, is always mostly uh, handled by men, but less and less, I would say. I think that's I think that's really changing, and I think that if you look at the responsible 
senior people in type 03, there are, there's a really good um, gender diversity and there's a lot of very influential, important, um, you know, technical figures who are women. So I, um, and yeah, there's a, there's always a, there's a chicken and egg problem with the diversity, but um, I think that uh, type 03 is doing quite well. I'm also, um, I mean, I don't think that we should ever sort of stop and say, okay, we, you know, it's enough now, but yeah. I'm also um, interested, I have a personal stake, I think, in the expansion beyond Europe. And um, there's a little bit of typo three in Italy. There is some in France. Um, there's quite a bit going on in Africa, which is really exciting. And there's the, the, um, the, the Eastern European, the Romanian community and and a growing growing interest in India again which is really which is really really nice to see are you involved in in any of that sort of expansion or are you talking with francophone African uh, uh, developers or governments at all well um, I uh, I was asked by uh, Daniel uh, Omorodin that is uh, handling that expansion uh, project mm -hmm. and uh, well I don't have enough time in my day I have only two uh, 24 hours per day like everybody so it was impossible for me <laughs> to do that but um, I helped him to find some uh, mentors French mentors because yes in Africa there is a lot of French speaking people so he needed French mentors uh, I think we uh, I found one maybe he has more than one uh, French uh, participant for that project so um so I have a, a segment that I'd like to have on the show and it's called the suggest a guest so I'd like you to suggest who we should get in touch with uh, to speak about type of three and why Okay. Uh, well, I have a lot of name. I just one, <laughs> one. No, guess. give me three. Give me three. <laughs> okay. Of, um, of course, I would like Benny to 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 participate that interview because um, I think that Benny is one of uh, the well um, involved uh, and inspiring uh, members. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, That's a really easy answer, though. <laughs> Yes, of course, but don't ask me. <laughs> uh, another name would be, uh, I would like Petra to participate also. Yes, okay. Why? Uh, Petra, Petra Hazano. Yes, she's from the board too, and yep. she has a, a non-technical, very interesting point of view. So I think you would have a very interesting conversation with her. Another one. I was speaking. I was speaking with Petra yesterday. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> uh, and well, it's difficult to choose because I I know so much now people <laughs> in the community. Sure. Uh, <laughs> oh yes, I have a suggestion. Uh, um, uh, very new uh, members of the Structure Content Initiative. Mm -hmm. from the from the us and i'm very happy oh. that we have a us member his yes. name is paul um paul 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 uh anson yes H -A -H -A -N -S -O -N. yes okay good stuff i have taken note that's great so your suggested guest is benny mac petra has and paul hansen and yes. Petra, because she has a really interesting non-technical position and she's also on the board and she really cares a lot. Paul Hansen, because he's from the US and we need to spread the word over there and he's in the Structured Content Initiative, so that'll be quite interesting to talk about. And then Benny Mac, because he's Benny Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna revise the suggested guest to say, Suggest anybody except Benny Mac. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next question. What is the coolest thing you ever built with Typo3? The coolest thing I've ever built with Typo3. You mean um, a project? Okay. Uh, I love build intranet Ex mm -hmm. uh, instead of website i i prefer building uh intranet because uh there is more uh 
uh, interaction between the end users and uh, the uh, uh, editors and uh, webmasters, and there is more uh, UX behind. Because, mm. well, now when you build a website, it has to be beautiful, but it's very simple, and you don't have a lot of features now. So if you want to, to build better features, it's more intranet. And uh, yes, the, the latest intranet we built was very cool because it was a project we, we have since uh, years with a customer. Uh, first, this customer was a um, um, uh, research uh, industry. Uh, no, it's more an institution because it's more a mm -hmm. public institution. Uh, it, the, the, the research w w are about, um, well, there is a lot of topics. So let's say it's a research institution and uh, it has two fusion uh, with other institution. And last year, uh, the fusion was uh, with a lot of university. And now this customer is the biggest French university. Wow. In number of students, in number of searchers, it's, mm -hmm. it's a very big institution. And then we build the, their intranet uh, uh, and it, it was a very interesting project because uh, the design uh, was built by themselves, but with a very good designer. And the, the design is really modern and uh, the features also are, uh, well, a little bit complicated, but it was very interesting to build them. So um, uh, we, we made that. Sometimes that's more fun, right? Yes. And uh, also we built it, this intranet uh, in very um, uh, a few, uh, few days. Why? Because it was, <laughs> because it was an intranet we already built three times with the customer. Each time the fusion was another uh, with another institution. Oh. We take the intranet and we had few things and we take it and we had few things. So this intranet is very mature. And when they asked us, well, could you build us an intranet? We said yes, and with uh, a lot of features, but uh, in a very few times. So we won that project because we we we, we were the, the less expensive than the others. Because you because you'd already they'd already paid you for it before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but also because um, we knew how to 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 build it, uh, uh, and well. Again, with Type 3, you, you don't have to, 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 to begin from zero each time. You can take something and make it better and better in, in years. And yes, we are very proud of that project. Nice. Um, are you allowed to say what university it was? Yes, it's very easy to remember because it's the same name than the, the Tour Eiffel. It's Gustave Eiffel. Okay. <laughs> the, the Eiffel University. <laughs> Which would mean something completely different in Germany because the the Eiffel, not uh, Eiffel, but Eiffel is a, is a region just south of here, um, known for hot springs and wine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what are your favorite features of Typo Three? Um, yes, the page tree, of course. It's so logical and easy to uh, understand what's happening in uh, the, the, the navigation of a website. And also because it's possible to have in a, one interface, the global picture of all the structure of your website. And I say your websites because you can have more than one <laughs> inside uh, only page tree. And I think that <laughs> that was the first uh, way to, 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 to build it with, uh, in Typo 3 since the beginning of the, the, the tool. And this thing has never changed. And I'm very happy with that because it was the, the best feature and the best uh, thinking of Casper uh, when he built that right. uh, interface. Yeah, that hierarchical, picture of the structure it's so interesting that um it made sense in in 1999 i guess uh, when he was building it for that version of the internet and and how you know you have a, a home page and sub pages and then it made perfect sense that that became the menu um and then over time as the internet grew and typo 3's functionality grew um it's so fascinating that the same structures and the same data structures essentially also 
um, let you cascade permissions, let you assign URLs and domains to them, and whether it's editing permissions or or, or central style choices, um, it just flows through that thing, and 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 um, you have a visual representation there. It's uh, it's very helpful, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, you know editors really like knowing exactly where their stuff is too. I've noticed. Okay. Right. Um, so what is something that people don't know about typo three that they should <clears throat> you said <laughs> i mean <laughs> one suggestion is that it's not all gray with very tiny buttons in the background anymore right like the admin interface is is attractive and useful and responsive and you can do it on your phone but um you kind of touched on that before yeah. already <laughs> yes, um, maybe they don't. Uh, well, the, the the customers, the end users, sometimes uh, don't know that uh, it's uh, possible to uh, uh, personalize the interface really uh, on their needs. Uh, a lot of time, I met customers that had only admin uh, account. Ah. And that's and that's why they said, well, the interface is very complicated, but they shouldn't have that interface. They are not administrator. And then they discover that it was possible to simplify the interface for them and just put their uh, uh, the, the good modules, the good page tree uh, part, the good contents, the good field in each forms. Right. It's so possible. And then remove all the noise that, that they don't need to see. Yeah. So yes, a lot of customers don't know that it's possible and a lot of agencies don't take the time to, to make it. And it's very, yes, it's, it's, uh, it's a pity because it's, it's, it's one of the most important feature of the, of the tool. Right, and we really need to keep in mind the people who use our websites every day, the thing that we build for a week or a month or half a year and then hand off to them they have to they have to go there from nine to five every day monday to friday for for years right and if it's um and if it's efficient and pleasant um they'll be they'll be happier right and they'll do a better job and and we really you know we should help those people because the because we're we're essentially making the the thing that they work with every day yeah Nice. So, what have I what what have I forgotten to ask you? Oh, I don't think you have forgot to ask me anything. No, what's I don't have any favorite, questions. What's your favorite open source project? <laughs> Title three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so, you know, thank you so 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 much for taking the time. Um, and helping me with this first version of trying to get these um, <laughs> recorded. Thank you so much for your contribution and your work and and um, yeah, and being part of the, the open source world. It's great. Thank you so much, Rekha. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks to the Typo3 Association for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you, B13 and Stephanie Kreutzer, for our logo. Shout out to the magnifique Patrick Gaumont, Typo3 developer and musician extraordinaire, for the studio demo rough cut of our beautiful theme music. Thanks again to today's guest, Rachel Foucault. If you liked what you heard, don't forget to subscribe on the podcast app of your choice and share with your friends and colleagues. If you want to suggest a guest for us to have on the podcast, or if you have a question or comment, reach out to us on Twitter at Typo3Podcast. You can find show notes, links, and more information in our posts on typo3.org. <laughs>